Hey everybody, what's up? My name is Zachary Guthrie and this is my review of the Canon EOS R3. I got this camera back in July of 2022 and for the past year I've used this camera on just about every shoot I've done, whether it be an event video, a YouTube video, short films that screened at AMC theaters, documentaries. I've used this camera on gimbals, on tripods, handheld, in studio work, even on virtual production sets. So I've used this camera in just about every scenario possible and I want to give you guys my honest review of this thing. Things I like about the R3, things I don't like about the R3, and why I believe this is the perfect camera for any cinematographer. Now I could talk all I want but I think that the best way to start off this review is to actually show you some of the work I've done with the R3 to just get you all an idea of my style of shooting, my style of work, and I'll let you see for yourself if you like the R3. So yeah, you can definitely see I've shot a ton of work on the R3 and a ton of different styles of work too, which is really fun. So I think that really gives me the credibility to give an honest review on this camera from just about any sense. Now, before we go any further, I just want to mention that this is just going to be a video review of the R3. Photo side of the R3 is amazing. I'm going to pop some images on screen right now that I've taken. This camera is amazing at photos. The autofocus is insanely fast, insanely responsive. The viewfinder is amazing. You can take photos absolutely great with this. I really don't have any issues with the photo side of the R3. Um, it's amazing. It's a photo first camera at the end of the day. So yeah, photography is amazing. But we're talking about video work here. So this is my main rig that I use for the R3. So I've got the R3 right here. I have, currently I have the EF 50 millimeter F1.8 lens on this camera with a control ring adapter for the R3. I've got a small rig top handle and then the Rode Micro as my go-to microphone. So this is my main run and gun style shooting setup. Um, I would usually have the LCD screen flipped out. Um, really the only thing missing from this setup is a monitor and I just haven't found a monitor that I like yet for the R3. I've rented so many monitors for this thing such as the Atomos Shinobi, different small HD monitors. I've rented a ton out. I just haven't found one that I really like with this R3 build yet. So for now, I'm just basing it off the screen, which isn't a problem if you're using autofocus. But when you get more manual focus, it is nice to have a brighter, bigger screen. So that is the only thing really missing from my current rig. I know some people are going to say, oh my gosh, you have the top handle screwed into the hot shoe. That's terrible with the Canon cameras. It's not. I've used this like this so many times holding it up here. This thing's sturdy. I have it screwed in all the way. Um, no issues there. So let's talk about the R3. Some things I like about it. Uh, the big reason I bought this camera was actually for the ergonomics and the design of the camera. I was a big Canon 1D shooter for the longest time. I just always loved that big style body with the built-in battery grip. So that is kind of the big thing that originally drew me into this camera. And then obviously specs wise, it all kind of worked out. 
So this uses the Canon LPE 19 batteries. These things have insane battery life. I think this is actually one of the biggest plus sides to the R3 is that one of these batteries will last me half a day. I only have two batteries for this camera and I have never ever run out of power on full day shoots. These batteries are just insane. They're so good. So I have two batteries. Um, they are amazing. They just work really well, which is awesome. I love having the EF adapter on this camera. I think that's a must because that's really allowed me to use every single lens possible on this camera. I've used cheap lenses like this 50 millimeter lens, which I really like this lens personally. It gives a very nice vintagey bokeh look, which I really love. But I've also used a ton of other Canon lenses. The 8518 is one of my favorite lenses to put on this thing. But I've also used much bigger lenses. I've used Sigma Cinema lenses on this. I think my all time favorite R3 combo is the R3 with the Sigma 50 to 100 T2 lens. Oh my God, it is beautiful. The image you get out of that camera. It looks absolutely ridiculous, but it is beautiful. I love that about this camera. You can really just get so many beautiful images out of this thing. It really is amazing. In fact, I'm going to switch over to the R3 right now so you can see just how pretty this image looks. And wow, doesn't that look amazing? Um, yeah, a huge step in quality. Obviously, the focal length changed a bit compared to the iPhone. But compared to cinematic mode on the iPhone, this is night and day. This camera is amazing. So let me just kind of show you guys the setup we've got going on here. Um, so there's the R3 kind of shitty rigged up there. You can see it's focused on my eyes. You can kind of take a look. You know, you know, from like a vlogging standpoint, this camera is pretty good. Um, it just looks amazing. And this is just such a simple setup. I've got literally one bowling light set up here and that is like pretty much the only light on me. So yeah, it's just, this camera is amazing. So after using this camera, I think that the best scenario for this camera is actually using it outdoors. When you are outdoors and you're shooting as wide open as possible on your lens, so f1.8, f2.8, whatever is the lowest aperture your camera can go. When you're shooting there with an ND filter, this camera just is beautiful looking. I'm gonna throw some stuff on the screen right now, kind of showing you guys a montage that I did. I was on like a camp trip with some people and they wanted to recap of the events. Yeah, seriously amazing what this camera can do during the day with an ND filter. It just looks so, so pretty. And we've shot so much more with this camera. We've even shot exteriors at night with this camera, which look amazing. This shoot right here was our pitch video for my thesis film. And we shot this at night, basically only lit by a campfire, which is amazing besides the backlight, obviously. But just look how good this camera looks. This camera really is amazing in low light because being only a 24 megapixel sensor, the camera doesn't get as grainy when you crank the ISO up. So that's a huge, huge plus. Here's another example. We shot outside in Times Square at night, which obviously Times Square is a super, super bright place. But even just walking around New York City, look how good this camera looks. Like there's no grain, no noise in this image. It just creates such a beautiful image. And that's just exterior stuff. Interior stuff, it's just as good, if not better. You know, I'm gonna pop some shots on screen of different interiors we've shot with it. I'm telling you, this camera is just amazing in almost every scenario. And the last thing I wanna show you guys is what this camera looks like in a virtual production studio. So at the sales, we had the opportunity to shoot on an LED volume, which is basically the same technology that they use in Mandalorian. So I took this camera out, used the R3 on that shoot. And I just kinda wanna show you guys what it looks like because that's such an interesting, new way to use the camera. I wasn't sure if the camera was going to work with the flickering of the screen, but it ended up working perfectly. So check this out. I told you this car wasn't standard. Just where are we going? The future. So yeah, how about that virtual production in space? That is amazing, amazing footage there. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I did lie to you because that segment you just saw was not all shot on the R3. The first shot where the camera's moving to reveal the car, that was done on the R3, but all the other shots for that segment you just watched were actually shot on the red ranger helium yeah a red cinema camera paired with the r3 and let me tell you guys it is amazing this is something i've done a ton with this camera is pairing this camera with red footage and it just works it looks so good it's that 10-bit color 
inside this camera with the 4K, the C-Log3. The color science in this camera is genuinely amazing and genuinely my favorite thing about this camera by far. You just see colors that you didn't know existed with this camera. And I didn't realize just how good that um, color science was gonna be when I bought this thing. I was like, oh, you know, it's C-Log, it'll look pretty good. But man, this camera just sees colors differently. I don't know what it is. There's just a certain vibrance about the colors, a certain way that this thing sees camera, this sees the colors rather, that just makes this camera so, so good and genuinely makes this camera able to match with professional cinema cameras. I mean, RED is one of the biggest cinema cameras out there and you can match the silly little R3 with it. That's amazing and it looks so good. I mean, you can really not tell We've done this on so many shoots where you're shooting on a red and then you need to get a couple gimbal shots or a couple shots where you want to put the camera in tiny spaces. You can match the R3 with the red really well. It does take a little bit of color grading work, but it looks so, so good. And I think that's genuinely one of my favorite things about this camera. It's just how professional, how beautiful the quality of this image looks. There's really something about the color and the image that comes out of this camera that you just can't beat. It is amazing. So yeah, that is by far my biggest favorite thing about this camera. And honestly, the reason that this camera is so good for cinematographers, because you just get such a pretty image out of it. Now, obviously a lot of that is the way you expose the camera, the way you set up your shots, but man, when you do this thing right, it looks amazing. The biggest thing I think I dislike with this camera actually is the autofocus in video. The photo autofocus is absolutely amazing. But I feel like when you're doing video, the autofocus is just sometimes a little jumpy and it just feels a little unprofessional. Now, a lot of that is because I'm shooting wide open at f1.8 and I, this isn't the fastest lens, but I've had, had it happen on other lenses as well. You know, it's one of those things that the more you use the camera, the more you can see, oh, okay, this is where the autofocus is strong. This is where it is weak. So one thing I did to actually help that is I actually programmed this star button in the back of the camera. When you hold this down, it'll actually pause the autofocus, which is genuinely just a huge helper here so that when I'm doing a shot and the subject is tracked and then they're gonna walk out of frame, I just hold down that button and that pauses the autofocus to give you that more manual focus look. So there are workarounds around it. The other thing, which is kind of not really like a big downside to this camera, um, is that this camera is just a little bit too heavy for most lightweight gimbals, which is a bit of a shame. Um, the battery does weigh a decent amount, which makes sense because this battery gives off a ton of life. This is honestly the heaviest duty battery Canon makes for a mirrorless camera. Um, so this battery does make this camera a little hard to balance on a gimbal, especially if you have a lightweight gimbal. Um, I tried out the RS3 mini with this camera. We tried for, I want to say a half hour balancing it. We just couldn't get it to work. The camera was just a little bit too heavy for that gimbal. But if you put it on a more heavyweight gimbal, a more professional gimbal, like the RS2 regular RS3, it's going to work fine. My final qualm, I guess with this camera is this guy right here, we got the micro HDMI port. It's just too tiny. I don't know why they couldn't put a mini HDMI or a full HDMI into this camera. Um, Cause I think that would have just been very helpful mainly because it's just hard to find a micro HDMI cable. That's good. The camera doesn't even come with one. So when I'm renting out monitors, I have to make sure it comes with the cord or I have to buy my own cord. But being such an uncommon cord, there's not as many high quality cords for micro HDMI as there's for other things. I think I've broken two or three micro HDMI cords in like the year I've had this camera. And it was over the span of like a month. I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna buy my own cord. And I bought one, it broke, bought another, it broke. So yeah, that is honestly the only other thing I really dislike about that. But yeah, this camera is amazing. I could really talk forever about this camera, but seriously, cinematographers buy this camera. It's amazing. The digital image stabilization in this thing is also amazing. Um, that's another thing, kind of like the autofocus, you have to know when to use it because if I'm doing a talking headshot like this and I have it on, anytime I'm moving my head, the camera is going to try to follow me. So it makes static shots look really weird. But if you know when to use it, it can really, really, really make your shots look so smooth and so pretty. So you definitely want to use that. Obviously mixing it with a handle like this helps a ton too. There's really nothing I dislike about this camera. I will say the only thing I dislike about this camera from a photo standpoint, and this is not a video, problem is the card slot. Um, now for video, you can record the 4K onto an SD card, no problem. But when you're doing photos and you're doing bursts, it is really hard to write onto the SD cards in this camera at a fast speed. So you do have to wait a bit. So that's kind of just one thing where it's like, well, not the best thing in the world, but you can live with it. For me personally, this camera is amazing for running gun shooting as well as professional filmmaking. You can kind of use this camera 
in all scenarios and it really does hold up you know this is one of the highest quality cameras i've ever worked with it's really intuitive to use it feels good in the hands you can get some really really beautiful shots out of it this is just a great great camera overall so i'm gonna start rambling those are my thoughts on the r3 i really seriously love this camera so much and highly recommend it to any cinematographer if you have questions about this camera shoot me a comment in the comment section down below i'd love to talk to you guys about it um and yeah i seriously love this camera there's only a couple minor things that bother me about it that i've mentioned here but those are all things you can easily work around the more you know how to use them and the more you understand how it works but yeah that's really it for this video thank you all so much for watching i really appreciate it and i'll talk to you all again in my next video yeah.